I've been suffering from a bad cold recently and as much as I want to take a break from all the videos, this one phone just didn't let me stop. So pardon my bad voice for a few minutes and meet the V20, LG's new monster flagship. First disclaimer, this is a Korean model and it's the final production unit for consumers which I bought for myself. So whatever I got on this video should be what you get when you buy this phone. Now from a design standpoint, the V20 has a rather conservative look compared to the last year's V10. But I wouldn't use the word dull by any means. Matured should be the better term to use. In fact, this is a handsome gentleman phone all suited up. And while its looks may seem conservative, it offers a more polished, consistent aesthetic, which I thought was great. That aesthetic continues with a battery door that is removable, but opens up in one of the most elegant ways I've ever seen. Push a button on the right side and the 3200mAh battery is instantly accessible along with the microSD card and SIM tray. Great news for the road trip power users as it's a feature that's almost gone extinct with smartphones nowadays. Speaking of road trip, this phone still maintains the V10's durability rating, which means this is a mil spec phone. Its back is constructed out of AL6013 series aluminum used in aircrafts and yachts along with the polycarbonate plastics on the top and bottom edge used in racing helmets. So you can all pretty much guess that this will be a very sturdy phone. But frankly, I don't think LG is emphasizing this spec enough. This phone passed the military standard 810G transit drop test, which means it has been confirmed to US military standards to endure one of the harshest environments available. I call this the bare grills of smartphones. Call me old fashioned. From the scorching heat to the freezing cold, humid environments, these all shouldn't be a problem with the V20. And while not being waterproof like the Galaxy Note 7, it has some resistance to water, so any rainy day shouldn't be too much of a worry. Just don't go washing the thing in the sink or anything, and you should be fine. Moreover, I reckon most people tend to drop their phones on the ground rather than in a pool of water. You can go check out Android Authority's drop test video on that one, links in the description down below. But overall, the V20 shouldn't have a problem dealing with average drops. So to me, a drop-proof phone made a lot more sense than a waterproof one. Now the V-series was LG's answer to battle in the premium phablet market space. Here, the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 is still the boss to beat, or it was at this point, but the V20 is no slouch either. On front, the phone packs a 5.7-inch Quad HD IPS panel, which is fantastic by the way, along with a secondary display on top. Despite the two display sizes, it's still actually quite a manageable phone in my average-sized male hands. There are some visible bezels, uh, but that's the price you pay for a military-spec phone with a removable battery. And it feels just about right to not feel heavy, but feel every dollar you would have spent on this premium device. The metal back, although slippery, is much less prone to fingerprints, and the fingerprint scanner, which is also back mounted, is located at the place I find most comfortable and natural to rest my index finger on. It was also very accurate and fast at reading my fingerprints, but I do wish it had more depth like a dimple for easier identification. Nothing a simple case can solve, but I still felt it was worth mentioning for those of you wanting to use the phone naked or with a skin. Also, the volume buttons are tiny and don't offer the satisfying click of, say, an iPhone. Moving on to the internals, the phone's spec sheet holds up well against the other flagships, but being LG's V-series phone, multimedia is where the phone truly begins to shine. For optics, the phone has one 60-megapixel camera for those high-resolution shots and an 8-megapixel 135-degree wide-angled lens which allows for those crazy GoPro-like shots. The front-facing camera is only a single unit this year, but it's wide-angled, and you can adjust between normal shots and wide ones to your liking. On paper, the V20 should also claim the title as the steadiest smartphone camera around, with its optical and digital stabilization, as well as a hybrid focus system with laser ranging, face detection, and contrast detection. These should also allow for quick focusing as well. We'll see how that goes. And finally, the phone comes with the most abundant camera controls for both stills and video if you want to get serious with your smartphone photography and filming. More of which I will talk about in a separate video highlighting the V20's camera software. But for now, here are a few sample shots taken so you can see for yourselves. 
The full images are available in my Twitter account at JK96Kim. Another core feature of the V20 is in its audio. There's nothing much to say about the single downfiring speaker on the bottom. It's a solid speaker with fairly clear and loud sounds. The major selling point though here is in the audio DAC. Now unlike Apple's decision to remove the headphone jack, LG went the other way around. Inside the V20 is a 32-bit hi-fi quad DAC built by ESS, which easily outperforms any smartphones in the market as far as music quality goes. So with this quad DAC, LG is claiming for a 50% reduction in noise when playing audio. Also, when your music can't take advantage of the hi-fi audio DAC, regular music will be upscaled as well. Now, I'm no audiophile, but the music through the bundled headphones did sound great with very clear and loud output. And speaking of those widely acclaimed headphones, they are a slightly inferior clone to the Beano H3 headphones, but that's still plenty enough to enjoy great quality music, especially for a bundled headphone. The phone itself is also Beano tuned, but in selected markets like the US, this custom tuning will not be available for carrier reasons. Another audio enhancement was in the microphones. A triple microphone setup is there for HD audio recording and LG's custom app gives you control of how you want the microphone to behave. Great for starting YouTube YouTubers such as myself. In fact, this entire review was recorded using the V20's microphone. The AOP rating is also higher at 132 decibels for those of you wanting to record in extremely loud environments. Moving on to the secondary display, another V-series exclusive. The thing is twice as bright as last year's model and features bigger font sizes for easier readability. It's also an, uh, it's also an always on display and although not as informative as that of Samsung's panel, I came to favor the cleaner design of LG's interface. When the main display is off, you can tell the usual time date, and battery at a glance, and even access the quick toggles to some settings along with a music player. When the main display is on, you get more functionality with access to recent apps, pinned apps, and contact shortcuts, which did help with multitasking. The battery got a slight increase this year, with new and with Nougat's power efficiency, I had no trouble using this phone for a full day. However, daily charging is inevitable. Now, for software, the V20 is the first phone running the aforementioned Android Nougat right off the box, which offer welcomed improvements such as the quick app switch button, dual app windows, and better security measures. Couldn't say the same for LG's custom skin though, it's very light, and but not being able to change the main home screen is quite annoying and it doesn't have an app drawer. Fortunately, LG offers a previous build of its UI that fixes my previously mentioned complaints. At the end of the day though, I still find LG software quite pleasant to use with smooth animations and I got used to it pretty quickly. Also there is the option for themes to customize the look to your liking, and the themes are deeply integrated from the settings menu to even the keyboard. Now that's all the tech talk for this review, so how does it fare as a phone? Well first off, its height makes it very comfortable to talk on and I didn't have any trouble with cellular connection during my time with it. Call quality sounded clear from both ends, but I did wish for a louder audio when in noisy environments. The Wi-Fi range has also improved from the pre previous generation. I never got lower than 3-4 to four bars at any part of my home, but that obviously depends on your home. I got a pretty small home. Now before we get gloomy, let's get on to the price. This phone retails for roughly $780 in Korea, and since this phone hasn't launched anywhere else, it's tough to conclude how much you'll end up paying for it. There was an article that said it will be around $600 though, but for now, take this with a grain of salt. We'll know the details when this phone launches in late October. Now this review needs a conclusion. The fact is, I'm very satisfied with the V20, but the premium phablet market space this phone is aimed at is a battlefield, with the iPhone 7 Plus, the Pixel XL, all trying to get a taste of the Galaxy Note 7's fallen crown, LG is in for quite a competition. But honestly, I don't think it staggers behind one bit. It's an all-around, well-built smartphone with no major flaws and has its own exclusive features that give it an edge. It has a premium yet durable build and advanced multimedia capabilities never before seen on a smartphone. 
whatever bad impression you had with LG, this phone is here to fix. Now the pricing isn't confirmed yet, but I reckon most people willing to buy a product from a company at its best isn't too concerned about the price anyways. And you will really get what you pay for. So in the end, I highly recommend the V20. That's all for today folks, make sure to leave a like on this video if it helped, and subscribe for more videos such as these. I'll be back with a follow-up coverage of the V20 after a longer period of actual use as my daily driver. Until then, this has been AM Tech, thank you for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.